now we're gonna try to uh, check out the, the rest area um, on the way back to Tokyo. So this is what they, they call it the Tankuzaka. Tankuzaka. It's, uh, it's what they, uh, the Japanese version of the rest area on the, uh, on the expressway and we'll see uh, what's over here. And um, they, they might have like bentos and um, things like that, like a mini mall. So it's not really, it's, I think it's, it's a quite, it's quite fancy what I, what I think it, of it. Yeah, it's like a big travel center. Yeah, it's kind of like a travel center in the U.S. They even have a Starbucks here. Yeah, it looks like there's even a Starbucks. So it's pretty cool. So we're gonna go and check it out, and uh, we'll take the, bring the cameras and check out what's inside. So there is a glass area for smoking. <laughs> so we're at this rest area and it's pretty really clean restrooms and, and has like something like this, like a foot stand with a lot of steam buns with uh, pork fillings and veggie fillings and just plain steam buns. Uh, very very Japanese style and uh, steamy hot still going on in the steamer oh yeah it looks awesome so inside we have a huge food court that is in the rest area in Japan Starbucks food court all kinds of food So I have the ramen here, shio, miso, shoyu, Hokkaido ramen, everything. And over here, souvenirs, and then there's a shopping mall in here too. So on the other side of the mall, it's even more crazy. We have a new area with it's almost like a fair going on. And this is a rest area in Japan. And you have all these stands for selling foods and gift shops. And then over here, it's like a farmer's market with veggies, vegetables. And it's crazy. It's like, I've never expected anything like this before. Wow, this is crazy. Fresh vegetables at the roadside rest area. And flowers too. Unbelievable. This is truly a surprise. Wow, How do you like this for rest area food? Steaming hot. Meatballs. Shiu mai and tons of uh, things that I cannot even pronounce. All the yakitori parts that you want. Liver, hearts, skin, gizzards, everything. It's all here. That was the most awesome rest area i ever seen in my life it's like a rest area bathroom uh, travel center shopping mall food court flea market farmers market county fairs all rolling to one all in one place everything you want for the road and more it's all there I mean, you can get a decent meal, real food, not just hot dogs and, uh, you know, 7-Eleven uh, burritos. I mean, I'm talking about real food and even some fresh vegetable, you know, when you get home.
so it's definitely a, a a very surprising find and i'm so glad that we stopped here to check it out and so now we're on our way back to tokyo and uh and by the time we get back there i, I will tally up all the road the, all the expenses and all the the toll fees and everything and we'll let you know how much how much it costs us to to go to Mount Fuji for the day uh, you know for the day trip that we just uh, did and and hopefully it will help you out to kind of plan your next trip if you do plan to uh, if you do plan to make a trip you know by renting a car and, and driving yourself okay back in the city and uh, we have gotten off the freeway I mean the expressway and um, so the reason is that this route is cheaper so we're just kind of going below the, the the elevated expressway just kind of going along with it and with some lights and things like that and so it's gonna be about 28 minutes slower so, but that's gonna be $30 cheaper. So you can get about three bowls of ramen for that price. So that's kind of the, one of the reasons I chose to, to go with the cheaper and slower way. So overall, the uh, driving in Japan, the, the kind of takeaway is that, uh, you know, it's, it's fun and it, it's also it could be stressful at times especially you know the, the the rules that you have to follow and then also uh, the driving styles the wrong side of the road and all that factors and um, and you know you, you just have to keep an open mind um, you know treat everything as a, an adventure you know even surprises you know when you got a surprise oh surprise you know that's an adventure so so that way you kind of keep yourself you know relax and not like stress your, yourself out uh, because you know it's not really it's not for everybody you know? some people can do it some people are more adaptable yeah so I mean you, re you really have to be able to adapt to all the changing situation all the, all the changing rules and and all that stuff you know and the different like you know your memory your muscle memories on, on driving uh, slowly different and you gotta use the uh, GPS a lot and you have to trust it you know we find out if you don't trust your GPS and, um, and you, you know you could be ending up in the wrong expressway and uh, you know you could end up you know going the, the wrong turn and all that stuff so um, yeah, so that's about it. You know, right now we're back in uh, this traffic jam area, and uh, uh, hopefully it's not too bad. Um, and then we get to see the city, I guess, and also get a little bit more practice in driving in busy, busy streets, so that you know maybe next time I'll be a better driver in Japan. So and. Uh, yeah, by the time, I think right now we're done with the expressway. So we'll, I'll calculate the, the total price and then we'll let you know. The toll fees for the round trip is came to exactly $100. Also the uh, the car rental with the insurance and then the date rate also came to about $100. So for the whole day, we spent $200 for the trip uh, of the round trip about 280 kilometers and um, so I mean it's not it's it, I mean it is expensive for you know with comparing to what what would it cost in the US but but this is Japan <laughs> and also having a car is is, is, an, is a very expensive affair and uh, so, I mean, we're pretty happy with, with the whole experience, you know. Uh, for three people, you know, come up to about, Make a left turn. you know, like 
sixty dollars a person or sixty five dollars a person. I mean, like if you take a day trip, uh, join a tour, get on a tour bus to go to Mount Fuji, and you know that I think that's probably the same price for each person. And uh, also, we get the freedom of go where we want. We you know we stop at Starbucks for coffee. We stop at uh, the rest area to check out. You know all the food courts and you know just all the freedom. You know, so if you enjoy that kind of uh, freedom, I would encourage you to uh, to make to take a trip and uh, to to experience this. Uh, you know, and then if uh, if this is something not for you, if you think that this is kind of a uh, too much hassle or too much of a stress, then uh, it may not be for you. So yeah, uh, I'm pretty happy with the trip, and uh, I will definitely do it again, given the, the choice. Uh, so, so it's getting late, it's getting dark, and uh, I'm about, about two kilometers, two kilometers from my hotels in Chiba. See that hotel right there? This is the third hotel that we're gonna be staying in uh, in the Greater um, Tokyo area. Destination ahead. And this is the uh, APA. Tokyo Hotel. This is a hotel that is located in the Chiba industrial area and has its uh, proximity to uh, the Narita. So it's on the east side of the Tokyo Bay. And uh, see how we're gonna get there. So hotels out here is definitely big. I mean, compared to the hotels in in the in the city, out here is kind of like. The, uh, your airport hotel kind of uh, you know size in in terms of uh, the parking and also kind of like the uh, the reception and so right now we're trying to pull up to uh, the whole right here right the Tokyo mm -hmm. APA hotel yep okay. so the hotel name is APA Tokyo Tokyo Bay mm -hmm. So we see how, how we're gonna do this thing. Maybe they have valet parking. And uh, we'll see. So we're going to our room, 2014. And we're gonna see what it looks like. It looks like it's at a corner area. It's interesting how the doors are so close to each other. So I'm kinda waiting to see uh, how big the interior is. Okay, get the lights. Okay, so it's kind of uh, interesting. So it has the... Interesting to see there's a... Um, there's a... Uh, kind of a... Sink right here. So the shower area is separate. It's pretty decent size, big toilet with all the uh, standard Japanese automatic toilets. It's got all the the dispensers right here: body soap, shower, uh, conditioner, shampoo. So you got hair dryer. Um, oh, two hair dryers. Got all your toothbrushes and hair brushes coming out here. Oh, interesting. So it's kind of like a deep room. And it's got the windows with uh, a table and has a a twin size bed right here in the kind of hallway area and then we got two kind of a I think full size beds in here and then the, behind the curtains so those are the windows let's see what the windows look like so you can see 
And uh, Tokyo Bay. It's kind of dark. Really dark. And so that's Tokyo Bay. We'll probably show you in the morning. So it has a really big window. That's the room, hallway, and then big windows. And I think I like it. It's pretty. I think so far this is the biggest uh, suite that we are staying in. Got the mini fridge, TV. And then save, coffee maker, hot water maker, some kind of a, oh, oh dear, 12 strong, that's the movie, in Japanese. Yeah, so, so that's about it, this is the, maybe we'll give you a little bit of daytime filming to see what it looks like during the day with more lights. And uh, so that this is the third hotel that we're staying, and this is in the Chiba area, right on the Tokyo Bay. Uh, it's a little bit outside of Tokyo uh, city area, but close to the to the airport where we uh, will will be flying out in a couple of days. But for now, we're staying here just to uh, to you know to check out the area and um, see what they has to offer.